Okay, guys, so um, this is our first attempt at using Quill. Um, so before you do your first lesson, I want you to hopefully watch this video that kind of takes us through um, what we're learning. I'm starting like super easy, but I also think that a little bit of this might bene benefit us as writers. Um, so the objective we're going to work on today is by the end of class or by the end of this video, you will be able to correctly choose between a, an, or the to complete a sentence. So um, let's talk about these little words, a and the. They're like tiny little words and we use them all the time. Um, they're called articles um, and articles belong always before a person, place, or a thing. So let's look at these three sentences here. Um, notice that a comes before a thing, um, but there's an adjective in between. It's still referring to a movie though, a movie. It's just we slipped that adjective good in there. Uh, we have the hamburger, which is another noun, a thing, and an award. So notice that a is used in the first one, the, the second, and an in the third one. Let's talk about the different meanings of these three words because um, they all kind of mean the same thing, but they're a little bit different, right? Um, the first we need to talk about is a and an. So when do I use a, when do I use an? It's basically, it's really easy. Um, if a word has a consonant that it begins with, then you use a, a good movie, G is a consonant. If the next word it begins with a vowel, however, we would use an, an award. So I would never say a award, I would say an award because a is a vowel. So basically remember the vowels are a, e, i, o, and u. And so I would use the word an before any word beginning with those letters. It just makes it easier to say if you think about it. Let's look at these next two sentences um, because one of them uses a, um, a pen. I need a pen. We didn't use an because pen starts with a consonant P. And then the next sentence says, I need the pen on the table. So we've got a pen and the pen. Um, so let's talk about the difference between these two things. I mean, think about it. What is the difference between a pen and the pen? So yeah, a pen is just talking about give me a pen. Any old pen will work. The pen on the table is very, very specific. We're talking about a specific pen. I want that one right there, right? And that's basically the difference between a and the. The is used when we talk about something that is specific. So if I write the sentence, I read a book yesterday, my reader's going to think, well, which book did you read? Because you just said a book. It could be any book. If you write, I have a test on the giver, so I read the book yesterday, we know, the reader knows that you were reading the book, The Giver, because you had previously mentioned it in the sentence. Got a nice little fanboy there, connecting these two sentences together. Because I identified what book I'm talking about, I use the. So um, we've got a couple of practice sentences we can do, and this is going to look somewhat like the lessons that you're going to do in Quill. Um, it, it says, we waited in line at the store, period. So that's the first sentence. Blank line was very long. Should I use a, an, or the in this sentence? Well, I think we can eliminate an because the line starts with the consonant, so it's e either a or the. So yeah, of course, we're going to write the. The line was very long because we're talking about the line at the store that we were at. So it's a specific line. Tomorrow is my sister's birthday. I need to buy blank gift for her. So a gift for her or the gift for her. So the difference would be um, I am if I say the gift, that means my reader already knows what the gift is going to be. If my reader does not know what gift I'm going to buy, then we would use a because it's not specific. In this case, it would be a because we don't know 
what the writer is going to buy their sister. So that's it, basically. I told you it was going to be a nice, easy lesson today. Um, we learned that we use A to talk about something that is general, so non-specific, like a pen. We use the to talk about something specific, the pen on the table. So that's a very specific pen I'm, I'm interested in. And then um, the difference between a and an would be if I have something that follows that begins with a consonant, I use a. If the next word begins with a vowel, that's a, e, i, o, or u, then I would use an. Um, finally, we, use, use, we learned use a for something specific to the writer, but general to the reader. So even if the writer knows what book they read, like if I said, I read a book today, like I, as the speaker or the writer, I know exactly what book I'm talking about, but we want to think about our listener or our reader. Do they know what we're talking about? Right? So that's kind of the big difference too. Okay, so I kind of scooted along to the first lesson on Quill. Um, I'm just going to kind of walk you through how to do the lessons. So um, in the previous video, if you don't know how to access Quill, you can watch the, how to, um, the previous video I posted about um, accessing it um, called How to Access Quill. Um, so watch that video if you're not sure exactly how to get there. Um, but it's, it's pretty simple. Click the link, log into Google, and then um, click on the class and see your assignment for the day. So um, welcome to Quill Connect. That's my first assignment. I'm going to say begin. And it tells me that we're going to use fill in the blank with A, an, or the. In this case, we have to rewrite the entire sentence, though, um, and fill in the blank. Part of this is typing practice, which some of us need, I know, um, because we hate typing. And that's why we need it. Um, another thing is when we type these sentences, um, it will not say it's correct if I do not capitalize correctly, if my spacing is incorrect, if um, I do not use correct punctuation. So even if I get the blank right, I will still have to fix my sentence if I do it wrong. So we're going to copy this exact sentence capitalizing as we're supposed to. The redwood forest, so that is a specific name of a forest. It's a proper noun, so it's capitalized, is in, and then we get to the. So the redwood forest is in blank national park in California. The national park in California, that's kind of tricky, but notice national park is not capitalized. So that is not the name of a national park. There are many national parks in California, and we don't know which one they're talking about. So it's either going to have to be a or an. I'm going to go with A because the next word, national, begins with a consonant. Oops, I clicked the wrong thing. I'm going to go ahead and make a mistake here just to show you guys what happens. Okay, so after I think I'm good, I check work. It says proofread your work, check your capitalization. So it kind of gives me a clue. Like I mess up on my capitals. Oh, look, park should not be capitalized. So I'm going to fix that. Recheck. That tells me I did a good job, right? Next. It'll tell me when I click next um, the possible answers. Um, sometimes there's more than one possible answer. In this case, there's only one. Um, it shows what I wrote right here. And then right here is what answer that... Um, was correct. So next question. The Redwood Forest has some of the, oh, I guess we know that we're going to put the other largest trees in the world. <laughs> it just made sense. It like flowed. The Redwood Forest, I'd like my, my brain just said that right there because that makes sense, right? Anyways, um, the Redwood Forest has some of the largest trees in the world. So again, check work. Oh, something was wrong. Check your spelling. It even highlighted the word for me. Thank you. Because oops, recheck. Possible answers. There's only one possible answer. Um, I don't know why they did the here because the, the I did was down here. So go figure. Redwood National Park also protects blank piece of California's coastline. I'm going to go with a piece, because we don't know specifically what piece. Okay. And 
for like you don't have to be as fast as me at typing but with practice you will be so practice your typing when we do this right okay um for this one there was two possible answers that they would take so it shows me and so somebody could have put the in front of redwood national park because it's talking about a specific park and they would have said that was correct so interesting right um but what we did we just threw the a in the blank some of blank trees in the redwood forest are taller than the statue of liberty so we're talking about specific trees in the redwood forest um it's not really like it's not like that that tree right there but i know the trees are in the redwood forest as opposed to other places so it is semi-specific so we're going to go with that Okay, make sure I capitalize, spell everything right, use my punctuation at the end, right? Okay, shows me the right answer. The Redwood Forest is blank, exciting place to go hiking. The exciting place to go hiking? No, that doesn't sound right. Um, A or an. This time it's an because exciting starts with an E. Up here, you can see how our progress is. So there's seven questions total we have to do. That was number five. So we're almost done. Or I'm almost done. And then you have to go ahead and do this. Banana slugs are one of the most common animals in Redwood National Park. This is good capitalization um, practice too, I think. Check work. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, last one, the Redwood Forest is blank, very foggy part of California. A very foggy part of California. Check work. Next. Next. So what it'll show me is um, we're going, our results are being saved. We're done. And then we're going to go over here back to Quill um, or like a dashboard. Um, it says, um, kind of tells me um, my results. It says I'm really good at when to use Anne, but because I made a couple mistakes, um, it gave me just a yellow nearly because um, of my, I know it's kind of like lame because those were just like not mistakes with A, Anne and the, but you got to like check over your work before you hit submit or else it'll knock you down from proficient to nearly proficient, right? Um, so we're going to go back to my dashboard. Oh, sorry, because I'm logged in as a teacher. Um, that's why it's doing this. Um, anyways, so when I do that, it'll give me my activities and then um, we'll be able to toggle in between. Um, so my teacher screen looks like this. So I apologize, you couldn't see further, but I think that you get the idea um, where you can go and you can look at results. You can see the activities you have completed. You can see the activities you have not completed um, and the ones that um, you are meant to do. Um, so uh, be Make sure you pay attention to that capitalization, punctuation, and enjoy.